One of my sims just got dragged on a date to Paddywax Emporium in The Sims, and it made me realize just how lame those lots are. You may have forgotten what that is, but Paddywax Emporium is this lot from Get to Work. It's in Magnolia Promenade. It comes with three retail lots. There's like a toy store, a clothing store, and then this one kind of has like some furniture and some like iPads. I don't know. They've got these three shops, and I never come to them. I mean, I never have my sims go shopping here. I've played with like running a retail store on occasion, but when it comes to like actually visiting them and like coming here to go shopping. I just don't do that. I've literally only come here recently because I've had Sims get invited out. Someone calls up and is like, hey, you want to go to Paddywax Emporium? And then I'm like, yeah. And then I get here and then there is nothing to do. So I just leave. But honestly, this kind of place actually has some potential. Like, it's kind of a fun idea to have a toy store like this. I like the concept, and so I kind of think it might be fun to renovate this place. It really isn't that bad. I mean, well, <laughs> the exterior is quite weird, but it's not actually that bad. So my thought is that today we try and fix it. So here we are just deleting everything. I, I wish that you could see the full process because I actually did rebuild and bulldoze this about three times on stream. I obviously didn't include that because <laughs> you don't need to see all the bad attempts. You can see the the really long, decent attempt. The bad ones we can leave out. But it really took me a long time to figure out what I wanted to do with this place because it's kind of weird. Like, the shape is kind of weird, but I wanted to keep that sort of vibe. And whenever I looked up, like, actual toy stores, a lot of the ones that I was seeing and that I liked were ones that were in cities. And so we're talking, like, sort of smaller entrances that are a part of a much larger building. So there's a pretty cute storefront and then like six stories of apartments above them. Like I just, that's kind of the vibe that I wanted to go for, except realistically in The Sims, you can't really do that because you don't really have like buildings next door that are all attached and things like that. You can try and mimic it, but it just won't look the same as like a real London street would <laughs> in real life. And so that's part of why I always struggle with community lots, this one being no exception. But I think in the end, we managed to make it look decent and kind of have those sort of similar vibes. But I also wanted it to like have multiple entrances because in real life, this place would be like on a corner like this. You might have more than one door. People will be walking around shopping in this area. And so I wanted to kind of embrace that. I did struggle a lot with the upstairs, which you'll see, because I wanted to make it have an upstairs still, but then I couldn't figure out like how I wanted to do the roof and like what to do with all of this. But we did manage to make it work eventually. This is just one of those trust the process kind of builds. I swear it will get there. You're just gonna have to trust me <laughs> and watch me try for a while. There's gonna be some mistakes that you'll see. We certainly go through a lot of different ideas, but there does come a point where it starts to make sense, I swear. You may have also noticed that I've basically removed the entire original building. I mean, this looks nothing like the original building, but it is in the same place the original building was in. I mean, a lot of the toys are still in there, okay? So it, it is the original building. I'll give myself that, even though the original is not much there anymore. I also kept like those same awnings, the green awnings, Awnings. I kept the little red tile in the front. I did try and have like some odes to the original. I also kept the upstairs, which I mean, you can't tell yet, but the upstairs originally was empty. It just had like some boxes and some empty rooms, but I managed to make the upstairs of this one have like the bathrooms and a couple extra like furniture pieces for sale. Cause most of this place is a toy store. Like it's lots of toys that your Sims can buy, but upstairs there was like a toy box and a bookshelf and those like little tiny bear chairs, things that you might want to buy still, but aren't as, um, exciting <laughs> as the toys that are in the downstairs. And you know what? Now that I've actually rebuilt this, you can bring your Sims here. It does function like a toy store would. It functions like any regular retail lot in The Sims 4. You could bring your Sims here and like actually have them go shopping if you wanted to, which isn't a thing that I like ever do. I, I never bring my Sims out shopping, like I said, because I kind of forget that it's there. And also the shops are a little bit ugly. But if you wanted like the storytelling aspect of bringing your Sims here to this toy store and like buying your kids a holiday, holiday present or buying them a birthday gift. You could bring your kids here and like buy one of the toys. They're actually for sale. It does work. I, I don't know if I would, but you could. <laughs> it would work. It just would be a little expensive. The retail stores have like an up increased price. <laughs> 
yeah, as you might expect. I think this one is 25% more than you would get it from the build catalog. So if you wanted to buy like a little toy car, it would be more expensive here, but you could have your Sims come here and purchase it. I mean, it, it is a thing. You could also have your kids come here on their own and purchase things. They don't actually need to have an adult with them to buy stuff. They could just come here and buy them and you can't stop them. So the kids could just come buy out the whole store with mom's credit card and it would be fun. That's a, that's a fun story to tell, right? Your kids spending all their parents' money at the toy store. I did that when I was playtesting. I, I brought Alexander Goth here and I was just clicking and buying like everything to make sure it worked, you know? <laughs> you do have to actually individually set everything for sale, which is interesting. It doesn't take that long, but I, I did have to do that. And also if you wanted to, you could run this store. Like if you have get to work and, and you wanted to have your sim like own this place, you could have them buy this retail store and then work here. And you could also kind of live here if you wanted to. You can actually live on retail lots, but there is some empty space upstairs that you could like turn into an apartment and if you put a bed there and then locked the door you could have your sim stay here and like run the retail store and, and live here overnight if you wanted to. That's kind of a fun idea for gameplay as well to like run a retail store and, and have your sims be like the toy store owners in town. I feel like that makes them kind of likable, you know? <laughs> the guy who runs the toy store seems like a nice guy. Now I actually just did a kind of fun little trick there so I want to explain to you what I just did. You might notice that I placed a freeze on short wall height on that second floor and you might be like, wait a minute, you can't do that. You can't place freezes on short walls. Well, you actually can. So freezes are those like really fat trim pieces, the really wide trim pieces. You can place the skinny ones like that you can see in the middle of the building, but you can't place the wide ones on short walls. And that's because it's too short. Like if you tried to put a door there, it wouldn't work. Like it's too tall, but it's on the second floor. So it doesn't really matter. And it, the game by default, like doesn't give you the option to place a freeze there. It's when you try to, it's like mm, the wall's too short and it doesn't let you click on it. But if you have the freeze is unlocked by like say placing a medium or a tall wall height wall anywhere. So I placed a tall wall on the ceiling like on the third floor. It unlocks the freezes and then you can like click on them. It uh, it opens it so you can use them. And if you hold shift, you can place the freeze on any wall, even on short ones. Holding shift makes it so you can place a freeze or a trim on just one wall at a time. Cause you know by default how if you try and place a trim it puts like on the whole room. If you hold shift it'll just do the wall that you're clicking on. So you can do that with the freeze. You can hold shift and it'll place it only on one wall. So then you could just go around and place the freeze on all the walls individually. And then you got a freeze on a short wall height. I know it's kind of confusing me saying this without like showing you. So I will link the short that I made down below. I've been posting some like build tutorial type tips on my second channel, More Simsy in short form. Like they're only a minute long and it's like, hey, here's how you wrap roof around part. Wait. <laughs> Here's how you roof a wrap around porch. Wrap a roof around, no. But I made a short like explaining a few little tips and tricks and I'm trying to make some more because I get questions a lot on how to do things like that. And I feel like making one video with all the tips is useful and I've done it before, but it's also easy to be like, hey, if you want this very specific question answered, here is a 60 second video that answers it, you know, instead of having to watch like a 20 minute tips video that might not cover what you're looking for. Anyway, I made a short on that freeze thing. So I'll link it for you if you want to watch it. And I'll link my second channel as well. My, my second channel, More Simsy, is where I post all of my live stream re-uploads. So like, for example, I built this on stream and then I posted the whole live stream on More Simsy and then I posted some shorts that had tips from this stream on More Simsy. <laughs> so that channel's got quite a, um, an interesting array of content. We got three hour long videos and then we got one minute long videos. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to go over there, you don't have to subscribe, but you can just like dig around and, and watch some one-off things if you want to. I get it. It's annoying to have your sub feed flooded by more Simsy. I, look, I am not subscribed to myself because I don't want to see that stuff. <laughs> well, to be fair, I don't want to watch my own shorts. I watched them already. You know, I made them. I don't need to, I don't need to learn how to place freezes on short walls. I already figured that out. I always wonder about that, like about YouTubers watching their own videos because I, to an extent, like I obviously I watch my videos when I'm making them and like when they're going up and I'll, I'll like watch through a video before I post it, but I don't like rewatch my videos often. Like I don't really go back and like watch a video from six months ago that much. Like I don't really feel the need to watch a video that I made building a house last year. I guess there are certain things that are a little bit more fun to go back and rewatch. Like for example, I posted a vlog 
last week. I might go back and rewatch that in a couple of years because that's like more interesting. <laughs> it's like more different than normal content, you know? Like that one might be fun to rewatch, but I don't really want to watch myself on a normal basis, you know? Because like I remember this video, I made it. <laughs> I don't need to like rewatch my each room a different budget challenge, you know? But I think that makes sense. Like obviously like more special stuff is more fun to rewatch. Also shorter stuff is more fun to rewatch, but I don't often go back and watch my own videos. Like I don't want to listen to myself talk, you know? <laughs> I have to hear myself talk enough. I deal with me enough. We don't need more of that. Okay, but on the inside of the house, sorry, I need to focus. It's not a house either, it's a store. But on the inside, you'll notice that I was trying to have like some kind of fun color schemes. Like it basically is a square with four separate corners and then there's entrances in between them. And so I kind of took advantage of those separate corners in like helping separate different parts of the store. And so each of those different corners has like a different section with different kinds of items for sale. And so there's like a section with all the little figurines and there's like a stuffed animal section and there's like a little like boats and cars type of section, you know? There's a whole dollhouse section that has big dollhouses and a wall full of dolls. And so it kind of makes sense. It's probably how a real store would be organized. And then again, you can actually have your Sims come here and like buy one of those bears if you wanted to. And you know what? I will say that I can see myself coming here to buy like the stuffed animals or the dollhouses just because I like the idea of doing more to like have milestones in your Sims life. I keep trying to make up ways to do this. It's just because a lot of times when your Sims grow up, they kind of like become a teenager and then become an adult and then there's no like transition, there's no graduation. God, I w wish we had generations or like some kind of graduation in The Sims, but I always try to like invent that sort of thing just to like pretend my Sims are actually growing up. And I do like the idea of a toy store for that like toddler to child sort of transition because then like on their birthday, you could bring them here and like buy them a toy and pretend they came here with grandma. I like, it kind of helps to have that sort of storytelling and I sort of forget to do that. In my game. I kind of tend to leave that part out often, I feel like. I mean, don't we all, right? You sort of get into that just, okay, my sim's going to work and then coming home and then going to work and then coming home. It helps to have some, some fun things to do. And this is one of those weird lot types that I kind of forget exists, so it's nice to do something with it. I will say that I really had a lot of fun decorating the inside of this place. Keep in mind, it is just the base game and get to work, so if you don't have any other packs, you can download this. And so I only use the base game toys, but a lot of these things I kind of forgot existed. Like, I don't really use them that often. There's actually a lot of toys, like the little toys that your Sims can pick up and play with. There's loads of them and I didn't even use all of them and I had this whole wall covered with toys. So it's kind of fun to look around and, and see what we have for sale and then you can grab them. There's action figures, there's little toy cats and ducks and robots and dinosaurs and dragons, there's toy cars, like there's just there's so much stuff. <laughs> so it's actually quite fun to mess with, especially because they're actually functional. Like there are a few sections in this toy store that have like more decorative items. Like there's a, I put like a transportation section that has like those car figurines and there's like a plane figurine and a boat figurine and some trains. And those are decorations. Your Sims aren't gonna like play with the toy train, but with those toys on that toy wall, they actually will use those. And even toddlers can play with them. So it's kind of fun. And you know what else? It's also fun to build things like this because you get to use some kind of weird items you never else otherwise would touch. Like there, there's like the little robot head and like all kinds of random things that I kind of forget exist. And then you get to do silly things like make a gnome section. <laughs> like you kind of just have free reign in a toy store because honestly, pretty much anything goes in a toy store. Like you, you could kind of get away with using like any of the weird things in The Sims. The future cube can be a feature of a place like this when in reality, you don't really get to use the future cube all that often. Although I will say one of the most annoying parts of this was was where everything slots to. Now you might be like, what does that mean? Okay, so slotting is when you have an object like a table and you know when you go to put like a plant on the dining room table and it, it lets you place it in a few different slots on the table. Those are like preset when the object was made where all the slots are. And a lot of these tables from Get to Work where I'm placing the objects also have those preset slots. And the slots are so weird. Like they're genuinely bad, the layout of them, because I was trying to put all the toys on those little square tables and the toys were placing like so randomly. There aren't just like six tiny slots centered. There's like three and then like kind of to the right, there's three more, but not in the middle. It's like one of them is way further over. Why? 
Why aren't they even? It doesn't make any sense. At least you can place something directly in the center, but if you wanted to place more than one thing, all bets are off. They're gonna look stupid. You can't put them better. And also, I didn't want to like fake it and cheat it and put them not in slots, because I wasn't sure if it would break or not. And what I mean by that is like using the move objects cheat, because basically to place things not slotted on a counter or a table or whatever, a trick to get it to the exact height is to put it on the table, move the table away, and then take that item with move objects on and then hold it back and like place it where it was. It'll stay at the right height, but then you can place it like exactly in the corner where you want it and then put the table back underneath it and then it'll stay there. It's kind of hard because you have to like fiddle around with it and like place it without being able to see the table, but it does work to get us the right height. I just didn't know if it would break the actual like functionality of buying the object or not if you did that. So I, I made sure they were all slotted just because I wanted the place to function. But anyway, I realized that was a very weird explanation. So maybe I'll make a short on that too and I'll like explain how to slot it better because that's one of those things where you try and like tell someone how to do something, but if you can't see it because you're busy placing my Sims figurines, you're gonna be like, what are you talking about? Move the counter, what? So I'll I'll make a video, I'll explain. Do you know what else? These my Sims figurines are actually super cute. These are those ones that you can get if you ever have your Sims like dig around the like random boxes and, and rocks that show up that you can have them click dig. You can get these my Sims figurines from those. They're like in the mystery boxes you can open and you can actually like complete a collection. You can have your sims do this and I kind of don't ever use them and I feel like you should more because it's one of those things that like occasionally I'll have my sim like open a mystery box and then get one and then oh that's nice I've got one of these. <laughs> Let me put it on their desk or whatever, but it's kind of fun and there's actually a lot of really cute ones. Some of them are actually kind of hard to get to because there's like rare ones and things like that. I oftentimes don't really play with the collections in the sims because you can like collect all of the gems and like all the fossils and it's one of those maybe a little bit overlooked kind of features. Maybe I should use it more. I want to finish the My Sims collection. I love My Sims. My first ever Sims game was My Sims Kingdom for the Wii. How about you? <laughs> Did you play My Sims on the Wii? Because I loved that game. That's what got me into The Sims. If I didn't play that, if my grandpa hadn't gotten me that for the Christmas a few years ago, like, well, more than a few years ago. <laughs> I guess it was like 10 years ago or Wait, even more than that. Oh my god, I'm 22? It was like 13 years ago or something probably that I got given that for Christmas. Maybe more? 15? Surely not. When did that come out? Oh my god, I hate this. My Sims Kingdom Wii. October 28th, 2008. Okay, 13. <laughs> Ooh, all right, that was a close one. It was 13 years ago I started playing My Sims Kingdom. And if I never did that, well, I wouldn't be Lil Simsy, now would I? And and now that's my job. That's kind of weird to think about, isn't it? One of them weird ripple effects things. I'm actually curious, in the comments, tell me what your first Sims game was. I assume a lot of you probably played The Sims 4 as your first Sims game, but not all of you. A lot of you probably played The Sims 1 as your first Sims game. I didn't play the original Sims ever. I've played The Sims 2 now as well, but I played My Sims Kingdom and then The Sims 3. I, I didn't play The Sims 2 either, because I, I was a little bit young. I know a lot of people my age played The Sims 2, but I was only like five when The Sims 2 came out and I didn't have like older siblings who played The Sims because I'm the oldest and we didn't have like a computer. My parents weren't big PC type gamers. Like there was nobody in my life that played The Sims until I cared about The Sims. So I wasn't like introduced to it young. I know a lot of people who played The Sims when they were like three because their sister played and stuff, but I, I wasn't playing The Sims when I was three. <laughs> I wasn't doing much when I was three. Okay, but you can see now the build is pretty much done. I'm just doing some landscaping and placing some last minute things on the outside. So let's go jump into the game and I'll show you a tour. Reminder that this is what the place originally looked like. <laughs> Sometimes the things EA builds are so weird. Like I just don't understand the layout of this place. Also, the like flooring, choices. Look at how the rooms are placed. This is a room. Why is it like that? I've noticed this a lot in the older EA builds. They have some really random room placement like this that seems like it was a mistake and just left there. And you can't really see it, but there is a room. And if you look closely, you can see the edges of it. It's very odd. But inside we've got a pretty dark, but cute place with some windows and some posters and just lots of toys. The finished product that I made, I called it Monique's Toy Boutique. I changed the name because you know what? Let's be real. It's not actually a renovation of Patty Wax Emporium. It's a completely different place. It may have started out the same, but this is not the same. This is not a renovation. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not. You can't pretend it is. This is what it looks like. I think it turned out pretty cute. I'm actually really happy with this. I love this logo and I, the windows look great. There's like some chess tables and some trees. Uh, all in all, I'm really 
really happy with this place. So when you walk in, there's actually two registers. There's one on both sides, because I figured it kind of has like three main entrances and, and also the lot that it's on, like you would feasibly be walking around all of these places, like any of them could be the main entrance. So I, I put them on both sides of the stairs with the stairs to the bathrooms in the middle. And there are actually some signs that say like, hey, bathrooms <laughs> up there. But over here we have like the teddy bear section. We've got that My Sims trophy section. Over here's that transportation section. Yes, I did put a llama there because that counts too, right? Uh, over here we have like some more decor type items. This one's kind of random. It's got like bunnies and coin banks, piggy banks, unicorn banks, I don't know. And like just stuff. We got these little shelves with like future cubes and clay and pandas. This is my favorite part, the dollhouse section, because you can buy the giant dollhouses and you can also buy all the dolls for them. In The Sims, they don't actually use these dolls in the dollhouses, they use them separately, but in real life, you would pretend like, hey, buy a car for your dolls, you know? We also have things like these, these violins and the guitar. Those are actually for sale, your Sims can buy those. Upstairs, there's like the activity tables, there's some chairs. All of these things are also for sale, but I feel like you probably wouldn't use these that often. And then we have two kind of fun colored bathrooms. And then this area is all open. So I left this open on purpose because I figured if you were gonna play in it, you could probably expand this to have like more furniture for sale if you wanted to have like toddler beds or whatever. Or if you wanted to have your Sims live here, you can make this into an apartment. You could so easily have your Sims live in an apartment this size, like bedroom over here. And then, I don't know, kitchen living space. The one thing is that the windows are really low because keep in mind, we have that weird freeze up here, so it's a little bit odd, but it's not the end of the world. It does function. But yeah, that's the whole build. I think it turned out pretty cute. I know I built it, so I'm biased, but I like it. And like I said, I will link that full stream of this and also the shorts with like the tips, the building tips down below if you want to check those out. And I guess with that being said, I'll catch you all tomorrow. Bye everybody. Do you know what? We really need more signs in this game. I had the hardest time picking out a sign that I wanted to use as the main logo. And the one I used is sized up like eight times and it's just a little poster. I need more like business type signs.